us to be here today. So we come in with thanksgiving. We come in with praise. We adore him. He's our savior and he's our Lord. He's our keeper. We didn't keep ourselves, but it's God that kept us. He kept us alive. He kept us in our right mind. Hallelujah. And he's doing great things. Hallelujah. It may not seem like it. It may not look like it but hallelujah we got to see that God is doing great things uh, even in the tears even in the pain uh, even in the suffering the affliction we got to recognize that he is God hallelujah hallelujah we thank God for our pastor that have come in pastor Tyson and pastor Krista we give God a hand praise for them hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen. 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 At this time, Pastor Krista, she's going to come forth at this time. Lord, keep my soul from day to day under the blood. Under the blood, take doubt and fear and sin away. Under thy breath, just keep me under the blood, thy precious blood. Under thy cleansing healing blood, keep me, Savior, from day to day. Under thy pressure, keep me under the blood. Thy precious blood under thy cleansing healing blood keep me savior from day to day under thy precious Oh, keep me under the blood, thy precious, thy precious blood, under, under thy cleansing healing blood. Keep me, Savior, from day to day under thy precious blood. It's a wonderful thing to know that you are being kept because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Wonderful thing to know that his blood shall never lose its power. It's just as effective today as it was when he shed it at Calvary. So for this, God, we give you the glory in the name of Jesus. For this, God, we magnify your name. For this, God, we exalt you because you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. There's a song that says there is power, power wondrous working power in the blood of the lamb there is power power wondrous working power in the precious blood of i know there's power power Wondrous working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, 
wondrous working power in the precious blood of I know there's power, power, wondrous working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wondrous working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And it's all the blood. Of Jesus, oh, oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, and it's all oh, the blood of Jesus that washes my ass. Oh, and it's all the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, and it's all the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. That washes white as snow. Thank God. Oh, for the blood, I thank God for the blood. Oh, thank God. Oh, for the blood. Hallelujah. And that wall shed. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank God. Oh, for the blood. Oh, thank God for the blood. Oh, thank God. Oh, for the blood. And that wall sheds white as. Oh, there is power, power, wondrous working power in the blood of the Lamb. I know there's power, power, wondrous working power in the prayer. Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, I know there's power, power, wondrous working power in the blood of the Lamb. I know there's power, power, wondrous working power in the precious blood of one more time open your mouth there is power there is power power wondrous working power in the blood oh, of the lamb i know this power power Wondrous working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. If you're grateful for the power that's in the blood of the Lamb, open your mouth and give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we're grateful for your blood. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The blood makes it all possible. Uh huh. The blood makes it all possible for us to be sitting here in our right mind. Mm -hmm. Left to ourselves, we have no idea where we would have been at this moment and at this time if the Lord had left us to ourselves. But here we are. Mm -hmm. We're sitting under and in the grace and the mercy of God. Not left to ourselves, but we are in the hands of God. How many of you are grateful for being in the hand of God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I often say, and I'm getting ready to turn the mic over to our pastor, but I often say that no matter how old that I get, three times seven and then some, every year helps me to realize that I need God. Mm -hmm. Every year, every day helps me to realize that I need God. I can't do this by myself. And honestly, I don't want God to leave me to myself. 
if he left me to my own devices and if he left me to my own direction because I have no idea what's in front of me and I have no idea what's chasing me then I will lead myself into the wrong direction and end up in a bigger mess than what I am. So we're grateful to God for his keeping power and for covering us. Amen. 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 If not but for the grace of God, where would I be? Uh, there's a song that I'm reminded of that just says, and I love this song, it says, he kept my enemies away. Yeah, he did. And he let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Hallelujah. Then he rocked me in the cradle of his arm. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he knew I had been battled by the storm. Oh, if it had not been. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, where? Where would I go oh, if it had not for the Lord on my side? Tell me where. Hallelujah. Oh, tell me where. Come on, say that again. If it had not, if it had. Hallelujah. For the Lord. Oh, tell me where. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sing that for yourself. Where? Oh, he kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Then he rocked me in the cradle. He rocked me in the cradle of it. When he knew I had been battled. When he knew I had been battled by the storm. Oh, if it had not been on my side. Oh, tell me where. Thank you, Lord. Oh, tell me where. One more time, he kept my enemies away. He kept my enemies. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Through. Then he rocked me in the cradle of his arm. The cradle of when he knew, when he knew I had been battled by the storm. Oh, if it had. Thank you, Jesus. For the Lord on my side, oh, tell me where. Thank you, Lord. Oh, tell me where, where would I be? Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a great praise. Put your hands together for our pastor, none other than Bishop C. Sean Tyson. Hallelujah. Can we say praise the Lord? What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord today. And God's presence is already here. And I'm grateful for that and grateful to see all of you who have gathered today and those that are viewing online. We welcome you to this midday man of Bible study originating from Calvary Ministries International here in the city of God in Youngstown, Ohio. And if you haven't done so already, I'm going to ask you to take a moment to share this Bible study with all of your social media friends. We want you to like, to comment, to subscribe. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, we want to continue to bring you these med messages of inspiration and edification from the Word of God. And I'm grateful to be able to have this opportunity to share with you from the scriptures once again. Well, the Lord blessed us with a beautiful service here at Mount Calvary on Sunday. 
I could feel God's presence as I was viewing the service on the way to New Miami, Ohio, where the Lord blessed us to share with the saints at the Christian Fellowship Church. But I was just edified so greatly through the worship. And the Lord bless Minister Joe Moss, Jr. As I'm grateful for how God is blessing him and blessing his ministry. And all of you who down through the years have played a part in the development and matriculation of the young people at Calvary should feel very proud about how God is blessing our young people and how they are walking into God's destiny for their lives. It has been a wonderful time this month of consecration unto the Lord, and I pray that it will not end at the end of this month. As I've shared with you in previous times that consecration is not an event. It is a lifestyle. It is something that we should be fully committed to as holiness people. The distinction that comes with a consecrated and a dedicated life. One that is set aside and set apart to please God in every entity in every area of our lives. So I pray that although we're coming to the end of a time of corporate consecration, that this year you will make a personal commitment to present your body unto the Lord Jesus Christ as a living sacrifice and glorify God in your spirit, your soul, and your body which are God's. We have been bought with a price. We are not our own. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad I belong to Jesus. And when he comes to make up his jewels, I want to be counted among them that are sanctified. Jesus is coming soon. We don't hear much about it anymore. And some are continuing as though there is no second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But today I want you to know that every word from God is true. I believe every word in this Bible. I have staked my life and my future on my confidence in the infallible, unchanging word of God. And we're preparing now for what I'm believing is going to be a tremendously spiritual uplifting edifying service on this coming Sunday as we are preparing for our Holy Communion there are many great and high worship services that we engage in in the house of God but there is no service more significant none more spiritual none more impactful than the Holy Communion. I've been somewhat concerned in recent years because of the uh, familiar approach that many are taking to communion. And while there should be an intimacy with God that is experienced in the Holy Communion, we have to be very careful that we do not approach Holy Communion communion as we do the Sunday school picnic. I think that uh, one of the priest's sons ran into a tremendous uh, life or death challenge when he stretched forth his hand to try to steady the ark of God. You have to be very careful that whatever your interactions are with God that you realize it's God you're dealing with. And sometimes we have to re be reminded that God is thrice holy. And one of the reasons why I have not instituted communion once a month or once a quarter is because there is a human tendency if we become engaged in any activity too frequently, 
for it to become familiar to us. It has been said that familiarity breeds contempt, but it should never be lost upon the saints of God, the sacrifice that Jesus made to purchase our salvation. He gave us his all so that we could experience redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. It should not be approached with ambivalence. It should not be approached with indifference. It must be approached with a reverential, grateful, thankful spirit of high worship, of grateful praise, and the spirit of expectation of the miraculous occurring when we partake of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here today because God still works miracle. I'm a walking, talking, living, moving, breathing, singing, preaching, piano playing, tambourine beating, dancing for Jesus miracle. Every time you see me walk in the door, you're looking at a miracle. And while you have said amen, every time you look in the mirror, you're looking at another miracle. Your amen got a little better, but, what it, what, but, but it wasn't what it should have been. You had two miracles already today. When you woke up, that was a miracle. When you got up, that was a miracle. It wasn't your extra strength Tylenol that got you up. It may have helped you with your arthritis and your bursitis, but it wasn't your Advil that helped you to get over to the church today. It wasn't because you make an annual doctor's visit and because you eat nothing but fruits and vegetables. You're sitting here in this service today in your right mind because when the devil said die, God said live. And your praise should not be reserved for Sunday morning. Any time you come through the doors of this house, you ought to enter his gates with thanksgiving. That's not all. You said, but I am thankful. But I am appreciative for what God has done. But that's not enough. The scripture said, enter his gates with thanksgiving and with praise. I wonder where your praise is on this morning. I wonder where your hand clap is on today. I wonder where your thank you, Jesus. Hey, where's your thank you, Jesus? Where's your Lord, I love you? Where's your God is a good God? Where is your he's a wonder in my life? When you got a praise on the inside, nobody can stop it from coming out on the outside. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So when you have a thank you, Jesus, in your heart, it doesn't take a praise team, a choir, a praise leader, a bishop, a church mother, a deacon, evangelist, or a prophet for you to give God a praise. All it takes is when I think. That's it. All I got to do is think about the last time he delivered me when I should have been destroyed. Well, I didn't get up here to start a praise service, but since I'm a praiser, here it goes. Let everything that has breath give God some praise in this Bible class. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to look over and tell somebody God is not through blessing you. It's just getting started. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 16. And today for just a few minutes I'm talking about the purpose, the power and the priority of Holy Communion. The purpose, the power and the priority of Holy Communion. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 16. 
I had Brother Jeffrey Clark on my mind when I was riding over to the church today. I want to send the praise of the Lord to you, Brother Jeffrey, and let you know that out of sight is not out of mind. And I thank God for healing Darnell and for healing Sister Wanda's leg. You know, Sister Wanda fell and had a terrible break in the fibula of her leg. She was already carrying that great responsibility. And then here come the devil. Said, I think I'm going to push you down because I don't like the anointing on your life. I told someone on last week, the more the devil starts acting up, the more you ought to give God praise. Because it lets you know that you're on the devil's radar. The enemy doesn't bother anybody that he already feels that he has possession of. So think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. Then the next instruction is to rejoice. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad that you have been counted worthy to suffer for Christ's sake. So I'm looking for the Lord to heal the Clark family. Elder March, we've been praying for Sister March all night long. And we're just believing God for her total recovery. I've said this to you before. Doctors practice medicine, but God has perfected healing. I don't have more confidence in my doctor than I have in my God. And sometimes, as well-meaning as they are, they make mistakes. But that's when the prayers of the righteous come in. And how to reverse some of the mistakes that the doctors made. It was a mistake that resulted in my father dying in 2000. It was supposed to be a routine procedure, Dad. It was supposed to have been put in the pacemaker. That's when Bishop brought in the prayer team and God raised Bishop James E. Tyson from the dead. That was supposed to have been a routine procedure. But they nicked his main artery in his heart. And brought him back into recovery. And there he was, pericardium all filled up with blood. And he kept telling the nurse, something is wrong. And she said, oh, Bishop, it's just the pain from the procedure. An hour or two later, he said, no, no, I, I, I can't breathe. She said, you, you'll be all right. You're just having a reaction to the medicine. Wasn't long after that, he slipped into unconsciousness, unresponsive. They had to cut his chest open right then and there. No anesthesia. From the top of his neck down to his belly button to try to save his life. But I'm so glad. You can't die one day before your time. God gave him a 15-year extension on his life. Well, here come the Holy Ghost here. I feel like if the saints will give God the right kind of praise, God's going to give somebody an extension of your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to look at somebody and tell them, stop planning to die and plan to live. I have come that you may have and that more abundantly. I want you to put it in the comment section at home. Plan to live. Woo! Brother Phil Richburg, I see your best years ahead of you. When I saw you walking in the church, I saw the word better from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Hallelujah. And tears sown in sorrow are going to be reaped in joy. Oh, praise God right now with the clapping of your hands. Let me come on and get to my Bible class. I feel like having church here. I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 16. If you have it, can you say amen? amen. Read with me here and at home. Let's read. The cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion 
of the blood of Christ. Oh, you can expect to be blessed on Sunday. Oh, there's going to be a blessing in the cup. Read with me. The bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Verse 17. For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. The Bible uses several terms to describe the Holy Communion. Each of these terms emphasize a different aspect of the communion experience. In addition to being referred to uh, as the Holy Communion in the scripture, you also find this spiritual experience referred to as the Lord's Table. In another place, it is referred to as the Lord's Supper. But I want you to take a more in-depth look with me at the definition of the word communion. Communion is an intentional act of Christ-centered spiritual worship specifically dedicated to the remembrance of Jesus. An intentional Christ-centered spiritual worship specifically dedicated to the remembrance of Jesus. I told the minister of worship, I said, John, I need 15 minutes every Sunday morning before the service begins at 10 o'clock so that as the saints are gathering for worship, they can get their mind on Jesus. It's very difficult to have a transformative worship experience when you come into the service with your mind on everything but Jesus. It requires focus. It requires reflection. It requires meditation. And because we have people coming to Mount Calvary with all types of challenges, some needing healing mentally, others emotionally, others physically, some needing to be filled with the Holy Ghost, some needing to have demonic spirits cast out of them. Yokes destroyed in their lives. We owe it to them to create an atmosphere that when they come in the building, they come in contact not with church, but that they come in contact with Jesus. Because friend, if Jesus get a whole, oh, shut up, if God, can touch you one time, it'll take 12 years of an infirmity and dry it up with one touch. So when you come in the service, I want you to come in expecting to be blessed because we're coming in to remember Jesus. I'm in Luke chapter 22 and verse number 19. Luke 22 and verse Number 19, that great song of Andre Crouch, always remember Jesus, always keep him on your mind. The old saints used to say, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus, I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stayed on the Lord. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stayed on Jesus. A hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I don't want you to lose this, the culture of sanctified worship. See, 30 or 40 years ago, if you had started singing that song, the distinction in sanctified style of worship would have came out in the first verse. But now you sang it like a Nazarite. You sang that like a Lutheran. You didn't rock. 
You didn't pat your foot. You sang it like the Statue of Liberty. You didn't give me no bass over there, Brother Reed. I was waiting on Brother Mark to help me with some bass. He's a professional concert choir bass singer. Had me up here patting my own foot. I was the only one. I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was say on G. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stay, stay on. I tell you that I woke up this morning with my mind. Come on, Deacon Levels, you obey. It was stayed on Jesus. I hollered. Hallelujah. 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 That's better. Tell your neighbor you sound sanctified now. I'm in Luke 22 and verse number 19. Read with me, please. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it. And gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do how? The word communion is from the Greek word. Let me hear everybody say koinonia. It has several meanings. The word communion, koinonia, number one means fellowship. King David, get for me First John chapter 1 and verse number 7. Koinonia, fellowship, 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 7. Son, read it with me with that hoodie that looked like sunshine. Yeah. Read, but if we walk in the light, yes. as he is in the light, yes. we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, oh, yeah. his son, cleaneth, cleanseth. We ought to tell the Lord, thank you. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. And we all need that cleansing. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, is sufficient to cleanse us all. The word koinonia, communion, means, number two, a common bond. A common bond. The scripture says it this way, there's no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Deacon Jamie, get me Romans chapter 12 and verse number five. A common bond. No temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But with the temptation, God will make a way of escape. And the way of escape is Jesus. He said, I am the way. I'm in Romans chapter 12 and verse number 5. Read that for me, Deacon. And every one members one of another. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I cannot be all that I should be unless you are all that you should be. Because we are all united and tied together in a common bond of humanity. The word koinonia, communion, number three, means unity. Unity, Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 46. Honorable Deacon Stevens, if you'll get that for me, Acts chapter 2 and verse number 46. Koinonia, unity. If you could read that for us, please, Deacon. Read it for me one more time, digging just a little slower. Your brain is like a computer. That's why you're moving so fast. But for us mere mortals, you have to read a little slower. 
All right. All right. I want you to thank you, Deacon. I want you to notice something about that unity. That unity, that bond, that common bond, that oneness was strengthened by their fellowship in the church and away from the church. You see, you can have people under the same roof, but it doesn't mean they're on the same page. They were with one accord in the temple. And then they went from house to house, breaking bread, developing relationship, getting to know each other beyond their functions and titles in the church. That strengthens the family of God. Koinonia, number four. Koinonia is a public acknowledgement of the goodness of God a public acknowledgement of the goodness of God. And that's why I'm letting you know right now on Sunday, you can't keep your praise private. You've got to come in here with the rest of us who have been delivered from the penalty and the practice of sin. And we're going to join ourselves as one mind, one voice with one objective, and that is to give a public acknowledgement of the goodness of God I want to give God thanks for sister Renee Newman's 70th birthday she's back there still looking about 40 or so amen I'm in Psalm 116 and verse number 12 Psalm 116 and verse number 12 a public acknowledgement of the goodness of God. Hey, thank you, Father. He's a good God. Come on here. I said he's a good God. Amen. Psalm 116, verse number 12. Read it with me, everyone. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? 13. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Here's that public acknowledgement. Verse number 14, everyone. I will pay my vows unto the Lord when? Where? The elimination of testimony services hurt the faith of the church. Because it was in those testimony services that you heard what God was doing for his people. God's still working miracles. We just don't hear about it as much because we don't testify as much. But Sunday, we're going to give a public acknowledgement of the goodness, the mercy, the kindness, the long suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. Koinonia number five is partnership. Partnership, Philemon chapter 1 and verse number 6. Philemon chapter 1 and verse number 6. Partnership. Brother Reed, I want you to get that for me, big brother, brother Craig, and read for me Philemon chapter 1 and verse number 6. Read that in the hearing of this class and those that are also watching online. Philemon chapter 1 and verse number 6. I'm so glad for those of you that are coming into the class. I see you coming in and I'm going to ask you to share the class as you're joining us. And today we are studying from the subject, the purpose, the power, and the priority of Holy Communion. We're dealing thus far with the meaning of the word communion from the Greek term koinonia. Communion means fellowship. Communion means a common bond. Communion deals with unity. Co communion is a public acknowledgement of the goodness of God. And communion is partnership. Pick me up in Philemon chapter 1 
and verse number six. That the familiar of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. I want to read that same verse, thank you, sir, from the New International Version. The King James Version reads that the communication of thy faith. But listen to the NIV translation. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Let's get that again. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Lauren, sometimes it's not that God can't do it. It's not that God won't do it. All you need to do is partner with someone with the key that will unlock that realm in the spirit for you to get your miracle. <laughs> we would have never been reading the Pauline epistles if he hadn't been locked up with Silas. Had he been locked up with a non-praiser, we wouldn't be receiving the spiritual edification that we receive from the Pauline epistles. Oh, I say to you today by the Spirit of God that your future depends on who you partner with. And everyone that doesn't believe God, cut them off. Anyone that doesn't believe in miracles, release them from your life. Anyone that doesn't believe that God has greater and better things for you in your future, they've got to go. And sure enough, definitely 100%, don't you marry anybody that doesn't believe God is able. You want to make sure that you have someone in your life that when you come upon the storms that will inevitably come. You've got to have somebody laying next to you that can roll over at 3.30 in the morning and say, the Lord will make a way somehow. Mm. Got to have a friend, a brother, a, an associate, a father, a mother, somebody. That when your faith is compromised can just tell you, come on here. Let's go a little further with God. Hmm. Your partnership with us in the faith may deepen your understanding of the unlimited capacity of God to do the impossible. The word koinonia I didn't sing up about half my time today, but it's all right. God deserves the praise. Koinonia, communion, number six, means equitable distribution of blessings. Equitable distribution of blessings. My father taught us that we're not just blessed to be blessed, but we're blessed to be a blessing. I'm so grateful that my parents put that, that spiritual principle in me so that I wouldn't be selfish and self-absorbed and self-contained. Because what I've discovered is the more you do for people, the more God does for you. I want to say to all of you preachers that the Lord is blessed to go out and minister in other portions of the vineyard and you go to various churches. The first thing I want to say to you is that you do not determine where you go on the size of the church. 
Because some of you are, 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 are lying, saying that you have dates on your schedule that are not there because you don't want to go to a small church in a small city. Let me help you. Sometimes the saints in those smaller cities, in those smaller churches, are going to treat you with much more love, affection, and appreciation than the big churches in the big city because they have a value that they have ascribed to the word of God and the presence of God that you don't often get in big churches in big cities. So if you think you're going to go to some big church in some big city and pad your pockets, you better think again. Because many times when you go someplace to preach, it's not what they give you in terms of finance. It's what they give you in terms of prayer. It's the covering. It's the layer of covering that they add to your life and to your ministry. It's the experiences of talking to the older saints and getting their testimonies and learning what God can do in the testimonies of people that have been through the trenches through the wars, through the battles in spiritual warfare, and have lived to tell the story. Now you got yourself, you've been preaching for two years. First lady said two days. You're preaching two days and now you got a contract. This is common now. Got to have a contract with all these demands. Got to have a five-star restaurant. Got to have two or three first class plane tickets. I drove the first 30 years of my ministry by myself. The only reason I, I started uh, allowing the brothers to help me drive was because Deacon Gilchrist and Deacon Clyde Wilson said, you're going to kill yourself if you keep doing this. So we're going to assign some of the young men to help you drive. You've been preaching for two days. Five-star hotel, five-star restaurant, got to have half of your, uh, 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 your money. It ain't your money anyway. It's the church's money that they are generous enough to share with you, and they don't have to give you that. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. Then they say, I got to have half my money before I preach. I'm going to ask God to put a hole in your pocket so big that every dime you get becomes a deficit. Until you learn how to value God's people everywhere. Well, I, I must be some of my young preachers watching because that wasn't on my mind or in my notes, but it's in the Holy Ghost. You'll never come to Mount Calvary with your contract. Just go on somewhere else with your contract. Now, if you come here, we're going to bless you. We're going to love you. We're going to take good care of you. But it won't be because of the demand you made. It will be because of the value that we ascribe to the word of God and the anointing that is on your life. I want you to stop it. Bishop Wagner said to me in his last conversation, Sean, the time has come where sons must become fathers. And now when I go to preach, they don't call me brother. They call me dad. They call me pops. Young man went in Sunday, and I went to shake his hand. He said, Father, I looked around the room. <laughs> Is my dad or Bishop Wagner back from paradise? I guess I'm the old man now. I, 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 I don't need no affirmation. <laughs> See, <laughs> if you need to go on another month of consecration. <laughs> if you're in the spirit, <laughs> equitable distribution of blessings. I'm in John chapter 6 and verse number 11. Equitable distribution of blessings. John 6 and verse number 11. If you have it, can you say amen? amen. Well, I got four minutes here and I'm going to get ready to close. John 6 
verse 11. Let us read, please. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down. I think we can see from this definition of the word communion koinonia that not only can I not have communion without Jesus, but I cannot have communion without you. Amen. Communion was designed by God to be enjoyed with our brothers and our sisters in Christ. And while the Holy Communion is going to bless us as a church family and bless us corporately, it's going to bless you individually in those areas of your needs that have not been spoken to another human being. I believe that there's going to be a collective outpouring of the presence of God. It is a let us exalt his name together us and together let me read one more scripture and then I'll close in Luke 22 and verse number 14 us together the Lord is going to bless us together so Sunday when you come into the service saints you that are watching the Bible class that are not here in the church for noonday, those of you that are at work that are watching the Bible class on Sunday, I'm going to be looking at you very funny if you come in Sunday sitting on the wheel. My God. Yes, I'm going to do like Mother Goodson used to do in Indianapolis. Mother Dorothy Goodson, Evangelist Brogdon knows her, Elder Barbour knows her. She pull her glasses down. If you're sitting on the praise, Mother Blanche Hubble, she heard praise, hey, hey! <laughs> she was tearing with me and Sister Mother Maggie Lee, the wife of Bishop Willie Lee, when I was tearing for the Holy Ghost. She said, Sean, you can't get anything from the Lord with your mouth closed. That principle has been with me my whole life. And then, what are you? The teenagers, young people in the church, and Mother Goodson, when we wouldn't be praising God, she'd pull her glasses down and look at you. One Sunday, I was sitting there, and the church was going up in a high praise, and Mother Goodson walked by. She had this white handkerchief that she carried in her hand, and she came walking down the aisle, swinging that handkerchief. And she hit my feet. The church was in one of them in a high prayer and she hit my feet boom what's wrong with your feet <laughs> so if you come in here on Sunday sitting on the wheel acting like you're doing God a favor I might have to get me a white towel for a borrow it from one of the mothers and come and hit you on your feet and ask you where is your praise no one should have to ask us twice to give God praise on Sunday when we understand the power of the blood. When we understand how deep the darkness our soul has been delivered from, no one should have to say lift your hands and give God praise. Something in your own soul that remembers where God brought you from ought to instigate a praise in you that cannot be stopped when the music stops. Help me say glory here. Glory. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm in Luke 22 and verse number 14 and I'll be done. Luke 22 and 14. If you have it, can you say Amen. No spectators on Sunday, nothing but worshipers, nothing but praisers, no apostolic analysts, nobody sitting there trying to examine how short or how high somebody's dress is. Get your own dress together.
Examine yourself. See if you've been the faith or no. I'm going to go ahead and say this. I think after 12 years, I've earned the right to say this. I believe in modesty. Yeah, I believe it's biblical. But we have a standard in our church, and that's what it is. It's a standard that had been set by our pastors down through the years where we, we ask sisters to when they come into the service if possible we ask them if they could please be considerate enough of the house of God to wear a dress or a skirt we make that request in the sanctuary but you do know that you can have on a skirt that is less appropriate than a pair of pants So maybe it's not whether it's a skirt or a pair of pants. Maybe it is the spirit of modesty that is in the heart of the individual that is wearing the attire. So we may have to come back and rethink that, Dad. And Dad said, and brothers too, who look like they painted on their pants. Is that what you said, Dad? They painted on their pants. One day, a brother had on a pair of them painted pants, and Elder Smith came in with a new pair of pants and said, I bought you a pair of pants, brother. I said, well, that was a new one on me. I had never seen one of the elders buy a brother a pair of pants when he had on some of them painted pants. Uh, so I went and got some pants and hung them up in my office in the closet. I got that from you. So just in case they don't re realize that God doesn't want the exhibition of all of the anatomy of the physical body until we come to that place of revelation. I got some pants in my closet. Like my dad used to have them ugly ties in his closet. Son, that was when the brothers had to wear a jacket and a shirt and a tie to every service. And if you didn't have a tie on, Bishop James E. Tyson had a box. And they weren't nice ties. They weren't designer ties. And so to get this point across, some most of them were clip-on ties. It worked until Jeffrey Brand and the Percy Bland walked by and snatched off your clip-on tie. You came to church with a tie, you tied up next time. The principle was that saints always ought to look as though they represent the kingdom of God. That the external should reflect the excellency of God on the inside. That was the point. Amen. Got quiet. I better move on with the scripture. I'm in Luke 22 and verse number 14. Let's read. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles, how they do it? With him, us, together. Verse 15. And he said unto them, desire, desire How? With you, With you when? Us. Together. A common bond. Equitable distribution of blessings. Partnership. A public acknowledgement of the goodness of God. Unity and fellowship if you're watching this bible class today and you want to become a part of the family of god you want to partner with us in the faith that was once delivered unto the saints friend i want to welcome you to the life-changing experience of being born again of the water and of the spirit being filled with the presence and the power of god having your sins washed away calling on the name of the Lord in the waters of baptism. If you need special prayer, healing in your body, peace for your mind, direction for your future, clarity. 
I want you to call that number on the screen, 330-747-4445. A minister is waiting to receive your call, and God is waiting to answer your prayer. We would be so happy if you would come and worship with us in person, and you can do that on Sunday at 9 a.m. during our Sunday Academy our Sunday worship, which will include Holy Communion this Sunday, will begin at 10 a.m. And I want you to come and receive everything that God has with your name on it. Before we leave today, we're going to worship the Lord in giving in our midweek offering. I'm going to ask those of you today that are able to join me with a $20 free will offering. Let us prepare to do that at this time. If you're giving electronically, the ways to give are on the screen. And we want to continue to honor the Lord with the first fruits of our increase, our tithe. So today, if you were not here on Sunday like me or you were traveling, I want to invite you to honor God with his tithes on today. Those of you that are watching, wherever you're watching, in the United States and around the world. If you can sow, if you need a contribution envelope, just lift your hand right now. The officers will serve you. You can share in the giving of the Lord's tithe on today. I want to invite you to come out and be with us on Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. As we're here in our sanctuary prayer from 6 to 7 in the entire month of January, I taught a 30-minute Bible study from 6.30 to 7. I will do that again on this Thursday as the final lesson prior to communion on Thursday. So come out and be in the service in the prayer on Thursday. Join the First Lady Pastor Krista Tyson every morning at 5 a.m., early seekers, there God will meet you by placing him first in your day. To get your day off to a good start, join her every day, 5 a.m. at Chris Tyson Facebook Live or right here at Mount Calvary Pentecostal Church Facebook Live or at Christ Church Apostolic Facebook Live. I want to remind you that Celebrate Recovery is every Friday evening here at the church and I want to say this to you you don't have an addiction that the power of God can't break you come in and share with others who are in that process of healing and recovery and believe God for your deliverance has everyone been served if you have not just raise your hand all right I'm so glad to see so many that have joined us today in Bible study, and I look forward to seeing you in Bible study and prayer on Thursday evening. Shall we all stand?